How will weapon variants work out in Halo Infinite? Will Halsey's asset from Shadows of Reach play a part within the main story? And will Battle Royale through Forge work properly for Halo Infinite? Well, I answer that and a few more questions from the community, so stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again. Today we're doing another kind of video where I answer questions from the community. Recently I went on my community page, asked you guys, do you have any questions about Halo Infinite? And you guys certainly responded a lot, so I really appreciate your participation. So I picked out a few questions from the comment section there and we put it in a video here. So if you guys want to take part in the next Q&A video, which will happen very soon, make sure to subscribe to the channel to know when those community posts do go live. And if you want to stay up to date with everything going on with Halo as we ramp up to the release of Halo Infinite, Make sure you tap subscribe. So let's get right into the content here. Tranky Hank 0 asks, Do you think that weapon variants will be like Halo 5 or will they be changed in some way? Also, thanks. You're like the Halo newsman. Without you, I'd have no idea what's going on with Halo. Well, Cranky Hank, thank you very much for the kind words. Now, we do have some idea of how weapon variants will work in Halo Infinite. In the previous Ask 343 video, they talked about how they actually thought about doing weapon attachments and things like that. It sounded very similar to like Call of Duty's Gunsmith, which has been very well received in that game, which would be an interesting take to see what Halo could do with that. And they said that they kind of went down this rabbit hole of essentially kind of started feeling not like halo in a way but they wanted to maintain that idea of like customization or different styles of the same weapon so they wanted to bring in weapon variants this sounds very similar to like halo 5 where you have a set weapon variant that will be in the game now people actually really liked weapon variants from halo 5 i think it's probably one of the most well received things from that game though i would like to see maybe like some kind of tweaking or some kind of customization in a way that you can do with the weapon unless there's like multiple types of the same kind of weapon that just perform differently that'd be an interesting way to go about doing it personally like i said i'd like to have some form of customization maybe with like the scope on it or maybe just like the firing mode or something like that with the weapon rather than just having a preset thing like this is the weapon variant that's how it plays which it would be a much easier way to balance out weapon variants within the sandbox that's for sure though it would provide more player choice which has been a big emphasis with halo infinite though we do know like i said earlier there will not be any kind of attachment customization that you'll be able to have with your weapon maybe some kind of maybe light customization but i think it'd be pretty true to halo 5's weapon variants but maybe with a little bit of customization allowed to the player but for the most part i think we're probably expecting halo 5 level stuff now will we be seeing crazy things like the ad victorium right that shot like four rockets from one single tube somehow <laughs> through space science or where we see like the voids tear which like creates like a little black hole in the game and stuff like that like that stuff's a little wacky, though it is very fun. I wonder if they kind of want to stick to much more lore accurate kind of weapon variants. I think what we might see is something similar to say blueprints from Call of Duty, right? Where they basically take all the different attachments and combine them together in a different way so it's a specific type of weapon. And it comes with its own unique uh, coating and skin along with that as well. Now you can still change all the different attachments but it doesn't maintain the same skin color which is kind of like the same reason why you want to buy like the recent like dragon skin weapon that they have because it looks super cool. I could see something like that happening with Halo Infinite as it would be a really big incentive for people to grind out saying this coming season pass that's going to be in Halo Infinite. A good way to somewhat kind of recycle content but provide it in a new interesting way. Though I think maybe like the blueprint system where it's just like a set weapon maybe no customization for Halo Infinite might be the way we might see it happen. Nostalgic Gaming asks do you hope that Halsey's asset from Shadows of Reach will make some form of an appearance or mention of in Halo Infinite? I can actually answer this question now because I recently finished listening to the book of Shadows of Reach. So if you guys want to avoid any form of spoilers, let's check out the timestamps in the description and also on this video if you want to avoid any form of spoilers for the book Shadows of Reach. Though honestly, it's not that much of a spoiler. Okay, so you've been fully warned now about the spoilers. So. Uh, the reason why Blue Team goes to Reach is because there's a specific asset that Halsey wants Blue Team to pick up for her. At the end of the book, you find out that it's actually kind of like an early version of an AI similar to Cortana, but much more like primitive early version that Halsey was working with previously. Blue Team stumbles upon this AI, this dumb AI that was created to kind of just answer any kind of questions or any kind of needs about the actual AI that was decommissioned, but they might be finding a way to recommission that AI to find a way to maybe combat Cortana. And we do know from the Discover Hope trailer that 
Master Chief does have a new Cortana chip. It's one number above the previous original Cortana serial number chip. So could this be a way to have kind of maybe like a shackled smart AI implemented into Halo Infinite to fight against Cortana and the created? I think it's likely because honestly, like not a whole lot of stuff happens in the book Shadows of Reach. Like it's an interesting read. It involves Master Chief, so it's a fun listen in and stuff like that. But honestly, like not a whole lot like story-wise happens it's a lot more uh, action-packed kind of book rather than anything that really pushes the narrative forward or really makes characters feel or think in a different way and halo if it's supposed to be a good starting off point for new players coming to the game so it would make sense to have some form of like an ai companion with you as it's supposed to be kind of a spiritual reboot having your ai companion in cortana from combat evolved you probably want to mirror that in some other way but obviously you can't use cortana right now so maybe utilizing this asset picked up from reach could be the key to the success of the unsc against the created and cortana plix is asks do you think Battle Royale game modes will satisfy people who want Battle Royale when it's made through a random player in Forge and not a 343 developed one. It depends how feature rich Forge is and how much wiggle room you have when it comes to the amount of assets you can put into your own level. If Infinite Forge just put together a Battle Royale mode and it worked, you know, it definitely played well. And we had certainly had some fun game nights with it with our 16 player lobbies and stuff like that. Though it certainly felt like a Forge Battle Royale trying to really kind of get the same feeling but not gain the same kind of experience, if you know what I'm getting at. And also, yeah, you can make games in Forge, but then how do you create a custom game where 100 players or 60 plus players or something like your large player counts can jump into that game? Obviously, it will have to be on dedicated servers and to be able to just have like say the custom game browser if that comes in Halo Infinite to allow people to have like one up to 100 player servers, that's a lot of space and really difficult to kind of pull off on just such, such a customizable feature. And also if you actually want the game mode to be popularized in Halo for the Battle Royale scene, you definitely need to have like its own dedicated mode where people can just plug in and play. You don't need to have to jump through hoops like going through the cups and game browser, trying to find full lobbies, trying to find active connections and stuff like that people with good con internet connections and stuff like that it just be a complete mess the best way to do it, if you're going to do a battle royale at all i feel in halo is going to be having its own dedicated mode that you can log in and play can it be forge created and have like a feature forge playlist or something like that absolutely because people keep saying trying to just you know just do it in forge have it in custom games but do you realize how hard it is to just coordinate 16 people to be on the same page and jump in the game at the same time we were doing the custom game lobbies, we would spend half the time just trying to set up the teams, make sure people weren't just being weird, make sure people were ready and actually ready to play and stuff like that. It's a complete pain. If there ever was gonna be a battle royale in Halo, the best way to do it would be its own dedicated playlist. You can jump in, queue up, and you're ready to go. So like I said, could it be a fan created battle royale mode and then 343 makes like a dedicated playlist for that custom game mode forge battle royale? I mean, that would be certainly one way they can go about doing it. So 343 doesn't have the burden of having to create a battle royale, let the fans do it, but also need to provide the fans the infrastructure beyond the game itself to be able to create a well-balanced, well and good and fun battle royale experience. Really the best way to do that in my opinion is through a developers, but we need to see how Feature robust Forge is gonna be. So it's kinda up to that point. Sega USA asks, Hey Kevin, what Halo multiplayer map would you like to see return in Halo Infinite? My all-time favorite map would have to be the pit from Halo 3. I know some people might not like that map because it definitely, definitely certainly has its choke points, but I feel like it's a really well done map for like Team Slayer or especially Capture the Flag. I also do really love Heretic as well, or Midship, whichever one you want to call it. Sanctuary is another map that's one of my favorites of all time. I love playing it. It's just very important to keep in mind, like with these classic maps, will they play well with modern style Halo as we do have sliding and sprinting in the game and clambering. So how would 343 need to change these maps in certain ways to make it so that they still play properly? I think a map like Sanctuary might not work super well with sprint as you would probably have to elongate out the map a little bit, which 
Sanctuary was known for having these kind of open areas underneath the turret and over by the rocks side of things, but they utilize the rocks as cover, but having so much empty space right there would be kind of in the way. We do have Halo 5's Refuge, which replicates Sanctuary, but a lot of people don't really view that map as their favorite, as it does end up being a bit of a standoff. No pun intended, obviously, with a standoff map, but I would love to see the Ped or Midship come back, absolutely. VBXL asks, do you think anyone will die in Infinite, and if so, who and how would it impact the game? If anyone was to die in Halo Infinite, I don't expect any major characters like Master Chief, definitely not gonna die. I don't think Cortana's gonna die, uh, I don't think, I mean, I probably Ashram would probably be one. Uh, but I have a feeling Aatrox is going to come back at the end of Halo Infinite to kind of replace Eshram because Aatrox is out there in the galaxy kind of doing his own thing right now. I don't really expect any major UNSC characters to die, though I do feel the one character that could really pull on the heartstrings of people will be the pilot. I mean, we already have like an emotional investment with the pilot from just watching the Discover Hope trailer and itself, and also a little bit of the gameplay demo as well. Like. I'm already invested with this guy, you know he just wants to go home to see his family. What would be more heartbreaking than seeing that guy, like on the last mission, die? Like that'd just be this, one of the saddest things possible I think right now. Though I don't really expect any major characters to die, uh, just because it hasn't really been built up to that point yet since the Halo Infinite's more of a spiritual reboot, they're kind of restarting the storyline in a way. So if any major characters were going to die, it'd probably be in the next, you know, huge, probably two years after the release of Infinite update. So if you guys want to stay up to date with everything going on with Halo, make sure you tap subscribe. Make sure you check out the videos on the screen right now if you missed any content from me recently. Got a link to all my news and informational videos right there. So thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.